Hello and welcome to an episode of Spatial Data Discovery. In this episode, we're just going to take a quick look at QGIS, the Geographic Information Systems Open Source Desktop Application. You can download a version of this for any of the major operating systems, including Linux, Mac, and Windows. And the version I'm using here, you can see, is version 3.10.3, which is the current long-term service, or LTS, of, of QGIS. But any version of, of QGIS 3 should be fine working through this week's activities. When you open QGIS, you're going to get a screen that looks a lot like this. This is the opening page. You'll have menu bars and and toolbar buttons all along the top. On the left-hand side, you'll have a browser, which you can see goes uh, into your C drive or your home folder. It also includes some additional drives or services. Underneath it is a layers zone where we can actually have spatial data for visualizing. And then in this big middle zone, we have availability for our projects. So the first thing you want to do is just create a new empty project or come up here under projects and just click the new uh, new project. So this is our empty space that we can use for visualizing spatial data. And this is one of many tools you can use for visualizing spatial data. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to take a look at it. And one of the first things you might want to do is actually see a map of the world. Uh, by default, there's really nothing to add. So one of the things I recommend is coming up to the plugins and coming down to manage and install plugins. And finding the quick map services under the not installed to install. I've already installed it here. And as of recording, it is version 0, 0.19.11.1. And you'll see that it is a convenient way of getting a number of base maps. So once you have that installed, what this essentially does is gives you, under web, access to a number of services that provide maps. Um, one of the most classic ones is the OpenStreetMap standard view. So you can try out a number of different ones. Here we can just quickly see that we have now a visualization of the world. So one of the first assignments that I gave you for creating visual data was the GeoJSON. And if you want to add any kind of spatial data to your map here, the way to do that is through what is called the Data Source Manager. And there's a little button here to access that. If you click the Data Source Manager, you'll find that you have the options of adding data from a number of different sources. So you need to know what type of data that you want to add. We did talk about the fact that it was a vector data file. So you come over to Vector Data, and then it asks you where the source is, and you can come over to the Browse. And if you browse, you can find your example GeoJSON data that you had found before. You do have the option of filtering. So if you knew what type of data you were looking for, you could filter by it. Uh, in this case, it's just showing you all files. I know GeoJSON is going to be a vector file. Click Open, and then click Add. And you'll see that it pops up over here in the layers. Uh, it doesn't close the data source manager, so you have to click close. And we can see that these are those points I had you save from those images that we looked at. And you can always zoom in using the roller bar or scroll bar on your mouse. You also have the options of using the zoom tool. And we can zoom in to see where these points were located. Over in the layers, you can check and uncheck the different layers as you want to visualize them. You can also click and drag if you want to change the order. Remember, everything on top is what you look down upon, so you can see that this map of the world is actually hiding my images, so you click and drag it below, and there it is below my, my images. In the tutorial I have you going through, I've asked you to 
to add some raster data from the national map. And if you unzip that, you'll notice that you have a lot of different types of data in here, including some shape files, uh, the grid file, an info folder, and if you look at the readme, it'll tell you a little bit more about what these all are. It is a raster file. It is in Esri grid format, but luckily QGIS can handle a lot of different spatial data types. So we come back up here to the Open Data Source Manager. We come over, we are now looking for raster data. And if I come over to my workspace and look for my USGS national grid data, You'll find in the GRD with the North 34 West 84 underscore 13, there is a file that's much bigger than the rest. And the ADF, the W0010018 ADF file, actually stores the raster information. So you come down here to click open. It adds it to your source. You click add. And we see that we get a pop-up message saying that our current coordinate reference system is WGS84 and the source reference system is in North American Datum 83 and that there's going to be some accuracy discrepancies between how it's visualized and how the data is stored and you can just click OK and you'll notice it pops up over here in the layers so we can close and you'll notice if you zoom in on the raster data set that it is Sort of west of Atlanta between sort of Athens and Macon or between Athens and Milledgeville. You'll notice that it looks a little bit taller than it is wide. This is supposed to be a square tile and that's because if you double click on it in the layers you'll see under the source information it is North American Datum 83 and down here in the bottom right hand corner of QGIS we see that the way that the data is being presented is actually in 3857, the WGS84. So if we want it to look the way that the data set intended us to see it, we would come up and find the 4269, which is the EPSG code for NAD83. Click OK. And now we see that the raster data set is in square. It looks like a square, but we see that the base map is looking a little bit squishy. And that's because if we look at the base map, its coordinate reference system is in 3857 or WGS84 Mercator. So we can always go switch back to 3857. This is one of the nice things about GIS is this idea of on-the-fly transformations. We can change the way the data are presented. It doesn't change anything about the way the data are stored. All right, and the last data set that I'm going to share today is the ASCII raster file. So I've asked you to create a visualization of yours for the purposes of this week's discussion. So if you come up to the data source manager, and remember we are looking at rasters. This is the ASCII raster format. You come over to the browse, and I'll come over to our example data. I have included in your repository as well as here the Hansen ASC uh, ASCII raster file. So I'm going to click open and click add and we see that Hansen data set is added here. Alright, so before we find where the Hansen data set is, I'm going to turn off the images, the grid, and OSM. And then we're trying to figure out where it's located. If you're not sure where it's located, you can always right click and come to zoom to layer and then we see we jump in on it full screen here. We see some interesting shapes. Any guesses as to what this is? Well, if we're not sure, we can always come back over to the OSM base map, turn it on, and zoom out a little bit. And we see that we are over top of the northern, or rather, we're over top of the headwaters of the Amazon River Basin. All right. So if we want to take a look at this and visualize it, 
you can open up the properties window and come down to symbology. For symbology, there are a lot of different ways you can visualize raster data. Uh, typically, it opens up with single band gray, black to white, stretching min to max. And this is tree canopy cover, which goes from 0% to 100%. And if you wanted to highlight maybe the, just the bottom 25%, you could do that. Or if you wanted to visualize just the upper 25%, you could do that. You could also stretch and clip to min and max. So maybe you just want to see the middle 50%. And then we could just see the middle 50%. Maybe you want to get something a little bit outside of the gray band. Uh, so you come up to the rendering type and come down to single band pseudo color. And you might be given this stretch. We can quickly look at that and see we see stretched colors in linear greens and maybe you don't like linear greens you have options in terms of the interpolation method so maybe you want to do discrete instead of linear and maybe you don't want to do continuous but quantile so now you can look at discrete quantiles of your data and maybe you don't like green even though it is tree cover you might want to do something more interesting like spectral and then see something more interesting like this. And you can play around with the values. You can actually come in here and type them yourself. If you don't like the ones that they've given you, you can always reclassify, change the number of values manually. You can increase or decrease the number of classes that will automatically be calculated for you. You can even, whenever you like it, you can save your symbology to a file and then upload it and use it on another layer at, at another time. So that's just a little bit in terms of symbolizing raster data. Whenever you get one of yours, how do you actually turn this into a PNG? You could come up here to project, come down here to import, export, and export it as an image. You can copy to clipboard or you can simply click save. And I can throw this right on the desktop as a PNG. So example dot png and we quickly get a png if you would rather make this into a more cartographic map you can always come up and use the print layout you can give it a title and you can add a map here You can also add text. Or you can make the font something a little bit more readable. Center it. And can really make it your own before you come up and save it either as a PNG or PDF. And you see that we have created another version of our data set. And the layout, when you're done, you can close. QGIS, you have the options of saving as a QGZ project file. If you ever want to reopen it in terms of how it looks, it'll save the path to your data set and save the symbology. And that's all that's saved in the project file. So be careful if you move your files around after you save a project. And that's it for just a quick intro to QGIS in terms of changing the coordinate system, adding vector and raster data, and changing some of the symbology around. I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you next time.